Hello, and welcome to another edition of America's Godly Heritage. Abraham Lincoln is one of our nation's most beloved presidents. But did you know that he was responsible for making Thanksgiving the annual national holiday we know and love today? Let's check it out. But first, America's Godly Heritage needs your support. All you have to do is click on the like and subscribe or follow buttons. Every click helps, especially since we're a small organization. Thank you so much. All right, back to Lincoln. Let's spill the tea about Lincoln's Thanksgiving Proclamation of 1863, how it came to be, the points Lincoln was making, the similarities with George Washington's 1789 Proclamation, and how it applies to what is happening in the United States today. Beginning with the Pilgrims in 1621, Thanksgiving was celebrated intermittently in mostly northern localities and states. And by the time of the Civil War, several states were celebrating it annually towards the end of November. The first national day of Thanksgiving was proclaimed by the Continental Congress after British General Burgoyne and his 5,000-plus troops surrendered at the Battle of Saratoga in 1777. Later, Presidents George Washington, John Adams, and James Madison each declared two national days of Thanksgiving. Despite all this, there was little momentum to create an annual national Thanksgiving Day. That is, until Sarah Josepha Hale, the editor of the popular magazine Godey's Ladies Book, decided the country needed a national Thanksgiving Day to be celebrated on the last Thursday of November each year. She wrote columns for her magazine and letters to prominent politicians lobbying for this. For over 20 years, she was brushed off by everyone she wrote to. Not giving up, Hale wrote a letter to Lincoln on September 28, 1863, urging him to have Thanksgiving, quote, become permanently an American custom and institution, end quote. Unlike all the others who had gone before, Lincoln responded positively to Hale's suggestion. It could well be that since the nation was suffering and was divided by the Civil War, perhaps Lincoln liked the idea of a holiday that would help unify the nation and would turn people's attention to their blessings instead of their sufferings. In any case, he talked with Secretary of State William Seward about what he wanted the Thanksgiving Proclamation to say, and Seward wrote it for him. A letter written on April 1, 1864, by John Nicolay, one of President Lincoln's secretaries, confirms Seward wrote the proclamation. So here's what it says. Proclamation of Thanksgiving, issued October 3, 1863. The year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added, which are of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart which is habitually insensible to the ever-watchful providence of Almighty God. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed to invite and provoke the aggressions of foreign states, peace has been preserved with all nations, order has been maintained, the laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere, except in the theater of military conflict, while that theater has been greatly contracted by the advancing armies and navies of the Union. The needful diversions of wealth and strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The axe has enlarged the borders of our settlements, and the mines, as well of iron and coal as of precious metals, have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp 
the siege, and the battlefield, and the country, rejoicing in the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor, is permitted to expect continuance of years with large increase of freedom. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and prayer to our beneficent Father, who dwelleth in the heavens. And I recommend to them that, while offering up the ascriptions justly due him, that for such singular deliverances and blessings, they do also, with humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers in the lamentable civil strife in which we are unavoidably engaged, and fervently implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it, as soon as may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. In testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed. Done at the city of Washington this third day of October, in the year of our Lord, 1863, and of the independence of the United States, the 88th. Abraham Lincoln By the President, William H. Seward, Secretary of State so let's highlight a few things from this proclamation. First, it summarizes many blessings from the providence of Almighty God. Okay, so what does this term providence mean? In the 1700s and 1800s, divine providence was a cornerstone of Christian teaching. It was the belief that God was the ever-active governor of the universe, that God governed creation as a loving Father, working all things for good. Wrapped up in that concept were these other ideas. God governs the universe. Psalm 103, 19, Psalm 147, 4. God governs the earth. Psalm 24, 1, Matthew 5, 45. God governs the nations. Psalm 2, 1, Psalm 67, 4. God governs human destiny. Jeremiah 29, 11. Galatians 1.15 God is our provider. Genesis 22.4 Philippians 4.19 And God protects us. Joshua 24.17 Psalm 40.11 So here, by using the word providence, Lincoln is thanking God, who governs the entire universe, for his blessings, for his provision and protection both for individuals and for the nation, during the tumultuous time in which he lived. And specifically, he mentions that God is the source of the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies, and also peace with other nations. This was important because since the armed forces and the government were all distracted by the Civil War, and since the armed forces were scattered all over the place as they battled the Confederacy, it would have been possible for other nations to try to come in and conquer the Union, but that didn't happen. God protected the nation. Also, order was maintained, laws were respected and obeyed, there was harmony, and progress was being made by the Union Army. Further, the country's borders were expanding, the country's mines were producing, the country's population was increasing, the country was growing in strength and vigor, 
the country was expecting to continue, and the country is expecting an increase of freedom. Then, in response to these blessings, Lincoln is emphasizing that the American people should solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledge these blessings. They should also act with one heart and voice. In other words, they should be acting in unity. Lincoln is most likely making a call for unity with the South here. In the proclamation, he makes the point of including the, quote, whole American people in every part of the United States, end quote. In Lincoln's eyes, the nation remained whole. In his first inaugural address, even though seven states had already seceded from the Union, he declared, quote, In view of the Constitution and the laws, the Union is unbroken. We are not enemies, but friends. End quote. So clearly, in Lincoln's mind, he is still seeing the people who lived in the South as American citizens who also ought to be participating in Thanksgiving. Another thing that Lincoln thought that American citizens should do in response to God's blessings was to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and prayer. Within that, he wanted them to offer up the ascriptions justly due to God for his deliverances and blessings. Ascriptions are beliefs that a particular quality belongs to or is typical of someone. So they would be praising God that he is their deliverer, that he is their provider, that he is their protector, that he is good, etc. Another thing they needed to pray about was to be humbly penitent for their national perverseness and disobedience. They needed to commend to his tender care all those who have become widows, orphans, mourners, or sufferers. They needed to implore the interposition, which means intervention, of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation. And they needed to implore the interposition of the Almighty Hand to restore peace, harmony, tranquility, and union to the nation. As you can see, Lincoln's proclamation is all about recognizing our blessings and acknowledging the source of those blessings on the one hand and repenting of our sins and interceding for our nation on the other. Oh, but wait, there's more. Lincoln's 1863 Thanksgiving Proclamation shares several similarities with George Washington's 1789 Thanksgiving Proclamation. Now, I don't have time here to read or discuss Washington's proclamation, but you can check it out in the America's Godly Heritage video and podcast titled, Surprise, Surprise, George Washington's Thanksgiving Proclamation of 1789. But trust me, it's an amazing proclamation that obviously influenced Lincoln and Seward as they put together their proclamation. So here are some ways in which the two proclamations are similar. They both were issued on October 3rd. They both thank God for plenty and fruitfulness. They both thank God for peace, harmony, and tranquility. They both thank God for his protection. They both thank God for his mercy. They both designate God as beneficent. Beneficent means doing or producing good, especially performing acts of kindness. Washington describes God as, quote, that great and glorious being who is the beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. End quote. And Lincoln describes him as, quote, our beneficent father who dwelleth in the heavens. End quote. They both mention the need for Americans to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God. Washington thanks God for his providence in winning the Revolutionary War, while Lincoln thanks him for his providence in turning the tide in favor of the Union in the Civil War, and clearly he hopes and expects that the Union is going to win the war. Washington thanks God for helping the founders create a new nation, 
while Lincoln thanks him that the nation is going to continue. Washington prays for the law to be obeyed, while Lincoln thanks God that it has been obeyed. They both mention the need for Americans to unite. They both mention that Americans need to ask God for forgiveness. Washington says Americans need to, quote, humbly offer our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions, end quote. While Lincoln declares Americans need to engage in, quote, humble penitence for our national perverseness and disobedience, end quote. They both call for a day of thanksgiving and prayer. And finally, they both call for the holiday to take place on the last Thursday in November. Wow, that's a lot of similarities. Clearly, they were both on the same page here. Washington and Lincoln are two of our best, brightest, and most revered presidents. And they led this nation at two of its most critical and delicate periods. Washington led America through the Revolutionary War and the birth of the nation, while Lincoln led America through the Civil War and the beginnings of the rebirth of the nation. Today, our nation is yet again at another critical and delicate period. We have been shredded and devastated by several years of deep division, injustice, disparity, and bias rooted in a war of culture and ideologies where one camp is founded in God, his principles, and the Constitution, and the other is most definitely not. It is time to win this war and to rebuild and restore the nation. Washington and Lincoln have shown us the way forward. They were clear that Thanksgiving is a time for unity. We are still one nation under God. No matter where we live in the country, no matter our political beliefs, no matter the color of our skin, no matter how much money we make, no matter how powerful we are, or think we are, we will all be setting aside a day to celebrate Thanksgiving with those who are important to us. Let this day enlarge our hearts so that when we return to real life, we will continue to, as Lincoln's proclamation says, quote, act with one heart and voice, end quote. Washington and Lincoln were also clear that Thanksgiving is a time to change our focus from that which fills us with anger, bitterness, despair, and even hatred, to that which fills us with peace, joy, hope, and love. We need to recognize our many blessings, both individually and as a nation. Further, we need to acknowledge the source of those blessings, our generous and loving Creator. Finally, we need to pray for our nation. Following the example of Washington and Lincoln, we should praise our beneficent Father for His providence, fruitfulness, peace, protection, and mercy. Thank God that His hand was upon the creation of the nation and that the nation is going to continue. Pray for the law to be obeyed and in faith thank our lawgiver that it will be obeyed. Repent for our national perverseness and disobedience, and ask God to forgive our transgressions. Commend to his tender care all those who are suffering. Pray that the Almighty Hand would heal the wounds of the nation and restore harmony, tranquility, and union to the nation. Finally, let us agree with Lincoln that we will see the, quote, country rejoicing in the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor, end quote, and expecting the, quote, continuance of years with large increase of freedom, end quote. Thank you for listening to this edition of America's Godly Heritage. We wish you and your loved ones a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. And of course, we hope you have a great day. Bye. Help us spread our message. Please support us through any or all of the following. 1. Clicking the like button for this podcast. 2. Becoming a forerunner and subscribing to our page on Buzzsprout or Patreon. 
which will sow some financial provision into our work. 3. Following us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Truth, or X. And finally, 4. Praying for us. If you want to check out the primary and secondary sources used to make this podcast, you can view them at the end of the video version, which is shown on YouTube and Patreon. We really appreciate your support. Thanks again. Bye.